Welcome back, everyone, to episode two of us playing, well, the Kaiserreich in Kaiserreich. I'm your host, Mr. Kaiserreich Lover, but rising worker militancy. It had been anticipated ever since the February market crashed, but has now become clear the breakdown of the German economy has greatly bolstered the far left of the political spectrum. Socialist propaganda has swept up thousands of workers across the nation, offering an easy answer to the confusion of many workers thrown out of their jobs because of factors they cannot control. It is because of the illusion of prosperity that the bourgeoisie, the Junkers, and the Kaiser, the top, maintain that has shattered. The final hour of the international capitalism is at hand, so to make sure to stand in line and hoist the red flag. The German far-left parties are generally small and fractured, and though they're not banned, they're only somewhat tolerated by the political establishment after years of splits and reunions. The Communist Workers' Party of Germany, the KAPD, has garnered most of the socialist share. Though supportive of the French-style syndicalism, the KAPD sold some reservations, believing that the trade unions in Germany have become hopelessly reformist, and so the revolutionary vanguard must be factory councils of workers. Hence, council communism. The Communist Party of Germany is also prominent, being distinguished by the fact that they participate in electoral politics unlike their cousins. In spite of uh, bad blood between the two numerous factions of the far left, they find the strength to cooperate from time to time, and today is one of those cases. The KAPD, the KPD and their aligned trade unions are planning a mass demonstration in Berlin on International Workers Day, May 1st, and expect to be joined by some events in the Rhineland and Saxony. Well, that's not good. Prussia and the Reichskanzler. For the first few decades after the formation of the German Empire, the Reichskanzler and the Minister President of Prussia were the same person and were considered to be the same position by many in practice. This was because the Emperor, as King of Prussia, generally preferred to keep the two positions consolidated and also perpetuated Prussian dominance or the Empire. The state of affairs changed under the Valkyrie for two reasons. First, <clears throat> The March reforms the Constitution, it introduced the vote of no confidence in the Reichskanzler, allowing the Reichstag to, to control him, and possibly remove him, which implicated meaning that the Reichstag can now remove a Prussian minister president. The second is Matthias Asberger, a liberal Southern Catholic, becoming Ca Reichskanzler in 1921, which infuriated the Prussian House of Representatives. After being, being petitioned to do something by the Prussian legislatures, Philip II ultimately ascended and appointed Bill Drews as the first independent Prussian minister president. Very German, Bill Drews. <coughs> Since then. An uneasy system of dual rules formed in the empire. Prussia controls 70% of the empire's population and territory, and as it now has its own government. Cooperation between it and the federal government, or lack thereof, can rescue or bury a Reichskanzler. However, essentially within the Prussian Grand Coalition grows, Reichskanzler Schleicher has spoken out against the system. In this critical moment, the empire must have one head, not two. If it needs to be consolidated, it needs to consolidate its resources. Being a respected official from Prussia, Schleicher has the potential to become the first Reichskanzler to also become the Prussian Prime Minister in over a decade, which will put Prussia's resources, influence, and law enforcement under direct control for better or for worse. His decision will be to trust Rodon, he's a political veteran, request to be appointed Minister President of Prussia. Uh, I, I really don't know which one this one. Um, we got canned fruit from Middle Africa, though. Thanks to initiative of Karl Ritter, Middle Africa is now producing tropical fruits, mostly canned in such significant quantities, they're appearing on, the, on uh, German store shelves. Well, does it not really change or challenge your local pot, pot, produce? It does mean that we're no longer entirely dependent on imports from the New World, and that alone makes for good propaganda. And you say pineapple goes on toast? Blum, blut mai. In response to growing militancy of the German workers and inciting previous sporadic cases of violence during the electoral campaign, the police force of Berlin issued a ban on open-air political gatherings on the city during May 1st, aiming to prevent the planned May Day demonstrations. This is not to deter far-left activities, however or activists, and even emboldened some. So the, these restrictions appear to affirm the official party line of the KAPD. The capitalism has entered its third period, and so it responded to workers' movements with more and more draconian force. Demonstrations uh, took place across the city. Rough tallies of the numbers show that the threat of police violence balanced out the growing socialist membership, meaning that the size of the KAPD and the KAPD gatherings were hardly larger than normal still. Berlin, Berlin police responded with force, sending out flying squads and attacking with truncheons whenever demonstrations were reported. Even the lawful conventions, such as SPD and liberal trade unions assemblies, were mistaken for socialist protests and attacks. Street combat broke out in the socialist-dominated wedding district, but as once said, it only served to escalate the police response. <coughs> Live rounds were fired upon KAPD demonstrations, and over 30 people were killed by the end of the day. Around 200 were injured, and 1,200 were arrested by the police. Uh, distribution of a communistische Arbeiterzeitung was curtailed in the aftermath to suppress the casualty numbers, but the message spread across the nation nonetheless, and further inflamed the friction between the government and the labor movement. The events were largely viewed positively by the right wing of the Reichstag, while the liberals and SPD were more divided. In particular, while the SPD newspaper Vivats produced a scathing piece stating that the KAPD was seeking to intentionally sacrifice supporters' lives, the Social Democratic delegation in the Reichstag officially protested the actions of Berlin policemen and demanded an investigation. Their demands fell in deaf ears, however, while tensions continued to rise. We can't let cynicalism happen here. Uh, it's kind of for the, his government's revival. Escalate rural comp suppression. Report ringleaders of the commune. Very nice. Reward loyal trade unions, as we do have a cup of white tea here as well. SPD and Wilhelmstrasse 63, or Dreyland Zexisch. Not the Bruin, huh? <coughs> Shuffle Prussian Ministries. Oh, Siegfried von Roder lives as a silent nonpartisan. 
against the VLP led coalition. Ooh, more political power and weekly war support. Negotiate with the Prussian Zentrum. <coughs> Excuse me. Schleicher Tyson Pact. A verbal guarantee of democratic liberties. Well, I don't know. Uh, let's be real, let's be appointed. I guess I don't know. We'll see. So we're still doing this one. Uh, we I think we read this, read this one last time. So if you want to read about this one, uh, Farvega uh, Abaddinst, please go ahead. Because I do want to do the man in the high castle as well. What do we got here? Ah, end of turn. So we're at 3025, and we got more than enough here. So we're pretty good. Um, increase by 50. Changes crisis type. No, we're good. In the cabinet, we can't do anything here right now. Home of summit for peace. We're not going to even bother with that. I would like to do the Polish stuff eventually. Uh, but we'll see. So, uh, parliamentarianism. As beneficial as it is to appeasing the people, it's prone to weakness and disarray. It needs to be organized and restrained to a system which will promote unity rather than division. Our ex chancellor Ralph Schleicher, follows his vision and, surrounded by a like minded circle, he shall pursue the slow dismemberment of German democracy, the fall of the Eastern Railway. The Polish Railway Network, managed by the KKWIP, uh, is largely owned by a German subsidiary of the Königliche Preußische und Großherzoglich Hessische Staatseisenbahn, a Prussian government railway company. This arrangement secured German oversight of the vital transportation route of the Oststaten, but also required considerable funding to keep the route operable for major military deployments to the east. With a dramatically reduced need for traffic, and cuts to the uh, budget, the railway's fate is now uncertain. With thousands of railway workers unemployed, the Polish government is under tremendous pressure to buy the corporation out from the Prussian hands. As a result, the Poles didn't care the little financial losses, but our military questions how safe it would be to entrust the Poles with the ownership of the most vital route in Middle Europa. We have bigger issues. Save it as a matter of national security. Ah, oh, it's only 15. Greece uses German assets. Thanks to the rippling effects of Black Monday, German investors who held majority shares in Greek factories and mines have been closing businesses down. <coughs> in some cases because they're unprofitable, but in others because investors have gone bankrupt. The Greek government has responded by seizing the companies despite the Treaty of Salonika signed after the war, stipulating that our investors have unfettered access to their economy. Many of the government are suggesting we respond harshly and not only apply sanctions, but pull all investment out of Greece altogether. Others say the country is only trying to stay afloat. Black Monday has hit us all hard. By sanctions and pull all business out at once. Sanctions to the Greeks will prevent them from peacefully joining our sphere of influence. Express our outrage. We'd be, we're all trying to cope. We'll prevent them from peacefully joining our sphere of influence. Well, we'll see where they end up. Social liberals, black money turn completed. Good. Alright, so what do we got here now? So, we need 3,000, 3,000. Negative 8. It's getting a little better. Still can't do jack squat, but a little better. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I am slightly sick of the time of this recording, so. Uh, that's not bad. Plus two cards will be drawn from the deck. I'm always okay with that. So, deals... Ooh, 1400. 1400. Unless a, a reform card uh, has been played this turn, this card has no effect. It's an inflation crisis. Capital control be more effective. Capital control, huh? Right bank's analysis. More creation, capital control. So we have 50% more effective. 3,000 to stability. So we're good. <coughs> Does it have to be more or the exact same? Here's your defense score. Because you do have price monitoring already. Stagnation. Not good. We need more investment. Seven fifty still wouldn't cover that. Oh god. Uh there we go, a thousand would be good. Relief money creation. There you go. Shall I not appoint a Prussian minister president? Oh no. <clears throat> That's not good. Under the advice of the Prussian House of Lords, Wilhelm II refused Schleicher's petition to appoint him as the next Minister President of Prussia. An official telegram from the uh, Stadtschloss stated that Rodin is currently fulfilling his duties well and the King of Prussia sees no immediate necessity to replace him. The move was welcomed by the conservative nobility in the House of Lords and much of the Prussian legislature, who don't maintain their independence from the, Prussian, uh, from, from, the, from the federal government, but was met with disappointment from the government. Numerous political figures supportive of Schleicher's economic recovery plans criticized the decision as well, seeing that today's economic collapse requires consolidation of resources, not infighting between Prussia and the Empire. We'll work with what we got. Pretty much. Alliances formed for this focus match may be of use later. So we should be good here. Cabinet Schleicher turn completed. Oh. Okay. Well, now we're down here. 
Hmm. What are five seeds? <coughs> well, the player is able to flag certain factions every turn to make them immune to being converted. Don't convert these. Both party, minor liberal parties, there's no point in even doing that one minority block. Mother's Day. Ever since the US Congress decided <clears throat> uh, the, the second Monday uh, Monday of May as Mother's Day in 1914, as a sign of love and reverence for the mothers of the world, this American tradition slowly gained traction across the Atlantic. After the end of the Valkyrie. <clears throat> The Association of German Flower Shop Owners, uh, of the Bahn Deutsche Blumengeschäftsinhaber, took advantage of this as a marketing tactic, promoting the date to raise flower sales in May. The liturgical emphasis on the original vision of the holiday also earned the support of religious conservative groups who considered it a viable alternative to International Women's Day initiated by socialist organizations. Movements calling for making it an official holiday earned traction in the German Empire in the 20s and 30s. Alongside business owners, conservative societies, and women's rights activists, the campaign in Germany was also endorsed by bulkish groups who connected the idea of Mother's Day with their far-right idea of a loyal, child-bearing mother who is the future of the Germanic mass race. The appointment of Kurt von Schleicher, a patriotic nationalist Reichskanzler who nevertheless displays a progressive streak, has uplifted the hopes of this activist campaign and numerous letters have reached Berlin, requesting to finally make Mother's Day a national holiday. The Empire has seen better days, but perhaps a small propaganda victory will cause no harm. The future generations that Schleicher respects women more than anyone else. Do we really? Mothers can wait. The country is nearing collapse. Do we really respect women here? <clears throat> if two of the three are aligned with us, we become aligned with a faction. All of them will become unaligned. Quea Verbindung. Our interconnection is Schleicher's tactic for subjugating the Reichstag and putting it under control. A schemer who relies on personal connections with party and union leaders to push his agenda, Schleicher operates under a simple principle. Powers are abstract units of power, and a combination of them, of some of them, can always be found for his goals. <coughs> Legation cities voting bailout. Black money has left deep scars in the global economy, particularly in the Deutsche Asiatische Bank in Shanghai, which seems to have fallen victim to unscrupulous business practices and possibly under insider trading. Our delegation now seeking guidance on how LA should vote on considering the proposed bailout of the DAB. Approve the motion, deny the motion, abstain. Approve it. Leadership changes in the center. Towns could definitely be better for the Centrum Party, the main representation of the Catholic interest in the German parliamentary politics. After many years of aimless leadership under the moderate Rhenish wing, two mediocre elections. Uh, completed or results in 1931-36, and the collapse of several government cabinets with Zentrum participation over the course of the last few years, Zentrum Chairman Theodor von Gerard has officially announced his retreat from the leadership of the party. Uh, party conference, the first in many years, is due to be called in the near future, and politically interested observers are convinced that it will be one of the fierce party internal confrontations. Over the last decade, new factions within Germany's oldest political party have sprung up like mushrooms and are willing to seize power and seize a party, lead the party, under the new political course. But the question will be, what political wing will come on top? Who will lead the Catholic juggernaut next? While Zentrum remains in succession crisis, no Zentrum factions can be protected from targeting attempts by opposition coalitions. Without their leadership, Zentrum parliamentarians can ignore the party whips and freely negotiate with SPD or the far right for a better deal. Oh god. Labor crisis. So work creation guards will be more effective. Work creation. Well, 3,500, 3,500. Now, ah, here we go. Yeah, we need to do that. Uh, a reform card. Release of money creation. Because if we do both of these, we still don't get enough here. If not complete within 28 days, neither side will win this game around. Plus, your cards will be drawn from the deck. So, technically, you, know, you don't have to win it <clears throat> each turn. <coughs> Anything else here we could get? 1400? There you go. 
the council and the radio. The most leading up to the 1936 elections did not give the German populace a good image of the government. Divided, fighting over petty conflicts and ignorant of the needs of the people, they appear complicit in the financial collapse of February. Recovery from the financial crisis requires for the government to regain the people's trust, both to ensure that the masses of unemployed and impoverished do not resort to radical ends, and always also to sway the Reichstag by displaying the Reichskanzler's personal popularity, Kurt von Schleicher, though more of a technician of politics than a public face, took upon the task. The Office of the Reichskanzler established a program of weekly radio talks during which the Reichskanzler explained his plans for economic recovery, the policies which he intends to present before the Reichstag for a vote on how they may benefit the German people. Then the radio talks he invoked a comparison between Germany's current bereft state and well, the condition of Prussia in the first half of the 18th century and compared his vision with the policy of a more moderate Friedrich Wilhelm I for national recovery, <coughs> much like the king. Concentrated on domestic reorganization and avoided conflict during his long reign. So too Schlachter intends to focus patiently on domestic problems, much like he had it, uh, tended to economic development and granted privileges to productive workers. So was government encouraged a streamlining of the economy and offered his fo uh, the most far-reaching satisfaction of the legitimate desires of the entire working class. This unprecedented move of personal connections between the Reich's councillor and the German people was a success. Hundreds of thousands across Germany turned out to listen to the radio talks and contents of and contents of Schlecker's speeches were constantly and consistently commented and discussed throughout the press. He has a way with words. Hey, that helps us out a little bit more. Of course, we still want to draft the tan, uh, the Tano Bod plan. So that'd be good. We get a recovery card. We gain this. Vast public works. Wow. I do want this one, but we're going to go this one next. And what else? Establish price controls. We need relief. Reform. Donna and Bod envision the expenditure of upward of 2 billion mocks on public works programs alone. Until the economy recovers and can deploy them again, millions of unemployed must receive temporary relief in the form of public works. Ewald von Klaus Schmenzen, Schmenzen attacks Schleicher. The scathing criticism of the Reichskanzler has been delivered in national newspapers by Edvund, Ewald von Klaus Schmenzen, the Oberpräsident president of Pomerania, or his office in Stetten. He denounces Schleicher's lack of principles and heartless pragmatism, which will bring no new vision to the German Empire, merely mockery cobbled up from a copying a hundred competing ideas. To him, the Reichskanzler is a liberalist tactician, unprincipled opportunist, Gerondim. One day he acts as nearly as a syndicalist before trade unions in the Rhineland, another day he denounces those same ideas as he plots with business owners and public bureaucrats. Such a man can never, never reinvigorate the German nation, merely drag it down deeper. The words of this rising star among German conservatives have traveled far. A well-connected East Albion aristocrat and leader of the Pomeranian agrarian movement, Klaus Schmenzim, Schmenzim, represents a new Junker generation has already cons been considered by the conservatives as a potential candidate for Prussian minister president or even Reichskanzler. A sentiment towards Schlecker shared by the DKP in particular. They have chosen this week to finally announce that their electoral alliance with the DL DVLP will continue in the Reichstag as well. He's even for attack from his comfy Stetten office. And now the Central Party's got issues. Conference nominates Stegewald. This week, Zentrum convenes its party conference in the city of Essen, in the heart of the Ruhr, a uh, known hotbed of powerful Christian trade union movements. Quite fittingly, the board has already nominated a candidate that comes from a trade union background, who, according to the observers, has an undeniably high chance of winning. Adam Stegewald, the most influential representative of the party's labor wing for several decades, and since recently, the leader of the Central Party, or Zentrum Parliamentary Faction, in the Reichstag. However, while Stegewald enjoys enormous influence and sway within Zentrum's party board, parliamentary faction, and among the Christian trade unions, he is viewed with skepticism by the church, the Catholic interest groups, and middle class organizations, who fear that Stegewald might be too divisive and not a proper lighting figure for one of the empire's most diverse parties. His opponents perceive him as a power hungry and anti clerical. And his questionable support for the Reich Chancellor Schleicher's queer, queer front concept has made him many enemies. Thus, many Zentrum delegates at the conference loudly demand that Stegewald should only be able to run for chairman under one condition. He has to resign as parliamentary leader in the Reichstag. Will the trade union behemoth negotiate with his opponents under these circumstances? He will negotiate with the conservative opposition Zentrum. This will soothe the concerns of a schlecker back faction taking over, but the Catholic trade unions see themselves as the natural leaders of the Central. And will they take this surrender well? Stegewald stands firm. Refuse any concessions to the conservative opposition. The particularist minded Bavarian, Luxemburger, and Alsatian delegates will not take as well, and a challenge will be intimate. So we can lose him. I'll say if he stands firm, and now he's going to get challenged. I'm not sure what happens. The Gation City Council of Council votes on providing aid to Sichuan province. The southern Chinese province of Sichuan is currently experiencing a terrible famine and struggling to save its people. They express that the Legation Council thor authorized the Legation cities to help them open up new sources of grain until the land can recover. Many experts in Chinese politics, however, warn that the money we send for famine relief could just go directly into Sichuanese pockets warlords. We deny. Declaration of the Kampf Kandektor. In an emotional speech, Stegewald has officially rejected any kind of concession to his opponents. 
Thus, under under thundering applause from supporters, in his words, the party leader of the future needs to retain full command over both the chairmanship and the parliamentarian faction. Otherwise, Intrum is bound to continue to sweep a course and will be reduced to a second fiddle in German party politics. Naturally, however, Stegewald's stance has evoked even greater hostility among his opponents. Escalation is imminent. <clears throat> This morning, a strong united front of middle class and church representatives and delegates from the particular minded states of Bavaria, Luxembourg, and Alsace Lorraine have formed a challenge of ambitious trade unionists and a direct competition in the so-called Kampfkonditor, a party leadership race in which both sides have a high chance to win. Since the end of the war, the Zentral Party organizations in Munich, Strasbourg, and Luxembourg have maintained far-reaching autonomy, which they are more than willing to defend in it. The ever-growing influence of the Christian trade unions could also har harm these achievements unless the resistance to Stegewald's rise is rampant. The vision is a nomination of a shared leadership of representatives from the all major Catholic constituent states under the leadership of the firebrand Bavarian Minister of Finance, Fritz Schaefer, who as a pious Catholic and proud Bavarian with riotous tendencies will be perfectly symbolized a return to more traditionalist, federalist, and middle-class oriented course. The party board, however, is not happy about these plans, fearing that a direct confrontation between two highly influential wings of the party could tear the entire central part, especially as regionalist tendencies play too a pronounced role. The counter proposal is a triumvirate compromise against Stegewald, consisting of the Rhenish moderate Hugo Munich, the progressive trade union leader Josef Hughes, and the moderately rightist compromise candidate Heinrich Brüning, the former vice chancellor. The rightist federalists cause chaos in the conference. A direct confrontation takes place between the Stigabald and the right wing delegates, and the convention is in chaos. This would give ample opportunity to another faction to present themselves as peacemakers. And the federalists accept the triumvirate. The right wing delegates accept a compromise triumvirate to stop internal party conflict, however. It's not likely to be taken well by the rest of the party, and the failure of compromise can mean the failure of the right wing agenda as well. Oh, crap. Another faction to present themselves as peacemakers. We're going to cause more fact. Chaos. Because I want to see what the chaos is like. The Progressive Gambit. The Federalists have rejected the board's counter proposal and are determined to stick to the shared leadership plan with the representatives from Prussia, Luxembourg, Alsace, Lorraine, and Bavaria, in which Schaefer will take a prominent leading role. <clears throat> now, direct confrontation is unavoidable. And the future of the entire party could be at stake after the upcoming chairman elections, which are likely to become the most controversial in the entire history of the Centrum. However, to surprise the many, a relatively obscure faction of the party has ca capitalized upon this tense stand-up for their own benefit. <clears throat> The Progressive Catholics. The swing stands in traditions that Matthias Asberger and dominated the party leadership during the Weltkrieg in the early 20s. Up until its disgraceful downfall following the Asberger Helfrich trial late 22. Ever since, the Progressive have been largely silent by moderates, rightists, and trade unionists. But now the time to shine again seemingly arrived, as when two people quarrel, the third usually rejoices, in a speech full of conciliatory rhetoric. Joseph Veth, Veth, former leader of the Progressives in the Reichstag, has suggested the nomination of the Silesian Zentrum Prelate Karl. Olitska, as a neutral candidate of compromise, according to Vett. Olitska stands above petty economic federal class interests as a cleric and would be the perfect guiding figure for the party. This election would emphasize the general Catholic worldview of the party instead of the interests of one particular wing. Vett's suggestion is wholeheartedly embraced by the party board, which believes that the nomination of a third neutral candidate would could alleviate the tension of the two candidate Kampfkandidator. What many delegates are, however, are aware of is that Olitska is far from being politically neutral, as Vett claims to be due to his ties with the progressives. Making practically a Trojan horse of a political faction has long been perceived as dead in the water. And will the third win while the two squabble? The progressive prelet Karl Uts Utska has nominated a compromise candidate to establish peace between the trade unions and the conservative federalists. Oops. We're going to need more cards. So we're in a labor crisis. Work creation is more important right now. So that's good. We need more here. Compensation for the Prussia Aspa. A number of major businessmen in Ukraine have come together in a state sponsored plan to buy the majority shares of the Prussian Eastern Railways, a subsidiary of the Prussian State Railway Company, which operates the majority of the railways in Ukraine. In this transaction, the ownership of the railway is transferred to the Ukrainian Railway Corp Corporation, admittedly still with a sizable portion of German private ownership. Alright. General strike in the rear. Crap. <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Hmm. I still want to do this one. We'll do this one next. The violence of Berlin during the May Day involved both the socialist movement and the employers' associations. A sharp the tensions between them. The situation of German iron is still industrialist. The most influential employers' organization in the world chose a policy of confrontation with the working class, refusing negotiations with trade unions. Their worry was that the further wage increases, demanded by steelworkers to cope with high inflation, would make the production uncompetitive and spell doom for the industry in the volatile economic environment. 
of all the trade unions in the Ruhr. Led by the free trade unions, but also involving the liberal Christian counterparts, terminated the collective agreement to demand a 15 fennec per hour wage increase. The industrialists responded with a lockout, trying to force the unionists to bend to their will. A country already suffering from economic plight and social societal tension. This triggered a cascade effect. Unions across the nation, but especially in the Ruhr, declared their sympathy with the locked out workers and joining the call for a general strike. Even several representatives in the Reichstag, most notably Max Sedewitz, spoke out in favor of the strikers and declared the lockout illegal. Over a million workers have joined the strike by the end of the week, paralyzing industry across much of the country. The Reich's council has a new challenge to face. Can't they see that we're suffering enough already? Oh, are you kidding me? Bruh. 4,000, Jesus. And we will have just barely enough to get there. Wait, so activating this card will draw a number of cards equal to the number of natural folks I completed in the draft plan turn out bag plan. Interesting. See, if they actually got the Zentrum right party, which is not good for us. Well, I mean, it's expected, but... The Ruhrkampf. Tensions in Germany since the Black Money Crisis, the suppression of the socialist movement and the instability of the central government sparked a general strike in the Ruhr, <clears throat> which threatens to expand the entire section entire, to the entire nation, if not contained. We must control the escalation of the uprising and find a way to suppress the strike via a negotiation with force. For the third-tier Reichs concert, such as Kurt von Schleicher, the Ruhrkampf also presents an opportunity. If you cannot control the Reichstag via parliamentary majority, it can subordinate it by gaining extraordinary powers to deal with its insurgency. Perhaps if the Ruhr uprising is kept active, not growing too strong too weak, until the end of the year, such an opportunity can present itself. The uprising is measured by intensity, representing the radicalism or radic of the uprising. The current intensity of the Ruhr is 50 out of 100, will increase by 10 every 25 days. Curtail distribution of the Rota Fan, yeah, which is the largest and lasting newspaper of the far left has been responsible for the growth of the Ruhr strike by publishing dozens of articles calling for workers to rise up, and its copies have been found proliferated by the Ruhr labor unions. Though we cannot stamp out its publication entirely, as they have plenty of experience working underground, we can curtail its spread with raids and police crackdowns. Activate the Yellow Unions. Organized by the cooling magnates of the Ruhr, Yellow Unions, which resist any revolutionary activity and support the cooperation of worker and business owner, what a presence, however, meager, among the Rhenish proletariat. Let's get them to spring to action and unleash a propaganda wave yeah, against a small circle of radicals who abuse the goodwill of the patriotic silent majority. Establish curfews. Establishing curfews in the provinces affected by the strike will ensure that dangerous radicals cannot organize and plan their terrorist actions during the night and thus curb their influence over the strike. Uziska victorious. The chairman elections are over. The votes have been counted and the final results are ready to be announced to the public. And the sensation is enormous. With an absolute majority, the compromiser Karl Utlitzka has left his powerful yet controversial opponent Stegewald and Schiff in the dust. This means that an actual cleric has ascended to the position of party chairman for the first time in Zentrum history. Uziska's election is also the first major score for long sidelined progressive Catholics in over a decade. With Ulitska uh, at the helm, it's likely that the party will pursue a more left leaning course than in previous years, as Ulitska is a known advocate for close cooperation with both the Social Democrats and left leaning liberals. In his native Silesia, Lutzka has been a popular and controversial representative of his party for over 15 years. He's famous for his almost revolutionary stance on German-Polish reconciliation, much to the dismay of the nationalist Upper Silesian Polish party leader, uh, Audebat Korfanty, and the local German conservatives, firmly believes that the Zentrum has more in common with the left-leaning democratic parties than with the political right with whom his party has long maintained a government coalition and the Prussian Landtag. <coughs> According to the motto, against the right we must defend our religion, while well, the left our differences are merely ideological. The future role of Stegelbaugh and the parties yet to be determined. According to the Central Party officials, it's likely they'll stay in charge of the parliamentary faction for the near future. But at some point, the victorious progressives will surely make their move and further centralize power in accordance with the wishes of the younger delegates. What no future does this spell for Zentrum? The new chairman of Zentrum is Karl Udlitska, a progressive prelate from the Mastusia aligned with the Demokratische Union. You better flag one last faction. Oh god. What fails, whatever. Fall of the Rodon cabinet. The incumbent nonpartisan government in Prussia, led by Minister President Siegfried von Rodon, has under the aftermath of the economic crisis. The elections of 1936 have driven tensions between the members of the Rodon's coalition as well. The Prussian DVLP, the DKAB, the Zentrum, and the LVP have witnessed a change of demeanor in their federal counterparts, and thus begun drifting themselves. After a failed vote on government subsidies to Silesian coal industries, which were blasted by the DVLP as a ridiculous support for sycophants and Jews, Rodon chose to resign due to the legislature's lack of confidence in his cabinet. Philip II, King of Prussia, accepted the recommendation of the House of Lords and, and appointed Adolf Tortelovich von Batocci Fiba as the next Minister President of Prussia, a relatively enigmatic East Prussian aristocrat of Lithuanian roots. Batocci 
uh, no, no, notoriety for his leadership of the Imperial Nutrition Officer of the Valkyrie. News outlines. Our outlets. Believe that he will seek to maintain Rodin's position of the Senate, right? They retain most of the incumbent ministers. Seems like a superficial change. Oh, whatever. Hey, we're 15 here. Look, that's good. KPD costs for armed struggle uh, in the Ruhr. Beginning of the general strike in the Ruhr has involved far left organizations across Germany, on the one hand, or on the other hand. They have welcomed the beginning of the strike of the reservation. In the view of the syndicalists and radical socialists in the KPD, KPD, and the far left parties, the last thing this mass movement should become is a mere battle for workers' rights. That is hopeless concessionism to the bourgeoisie upper class, which would merely make the revolution more distant rather than make it draw nearer. Newspapers. Such as the Communist Tisha, Arbeiter Zeitung and Die Rote Fahne begun calling for the Rhenish workers to establish dual rule in the room, displacing the state organs with workers' councils which can manage the day to day affairs, and provide leadership to the workers, and eventually replace the state entirely. The Marxist philosopher and one of the leading figures of the Berlin tendency of the KPD, Karl Korsch, called for the formation of the proletarian hundreds to defend the brewing workers rising from any attempts at suppression. The Preußische Geheimpolizei has curtailed the distribution of this revolutionary material. It's begun investigating both the KPD and the KAPD for their th state threatening activity. Syndicalism will not happen here. French spies got an Alsace. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And when the strikes, there's a hand of the French. The process should go high and pull the time. Uh, I've struck down a spy ring operating in Essen, which is connected with the embassy of the Commune of France. It appears the Paris are providing discreet support to radical elements in uh, the real general strike in order to prolong its activity and weakness, or even build up a revolution. The saboteurs and traitors were rounded up and arrested, and all their known contacts within the left have been investigated for any ties of France. A diplomatic protest has been issued in Paris, and tensions on the war have understandably grown, uh, a war seemingly unlikely, however, even in the distant future. No room for cynical traitors on German soil? Absolutely. Alright, let's see what we got here. We'll do one at a time. General strikes and street violence have broken down in the heavy industrial zone of the Ruhr, and threats have spread across the country have not contained. Is it 50? to increase by 10. Argentine tra trade delegation. As one of our largest import partners, the struggling Republic of Argentina has reached out to a trade ministry begging us to make an exception on the increased tariffs we impose on non Middle European nations. Since our economy is virtually entirely dependent on us, we can put the squeeze on them trying to force them into signing a less favorable agreement. Should they, however, take this opportunity to shift their interests to the Entente, they will cut us off from the vital agricultural exports which could give our rivals in the Entente an advantage over the Americas. We need their loyalty. Get the full effects of the treaty after the ratified in Buenos Aires. Or, what's a few extra marks between friends? I'm okay with that. The rendition of Westphalian sympathy strikes. Spark lit in the room. There's no reach the rest of the densely populated industrialized Rhineland Westphalia region. One after another, workers' groups and factories and local trade unions proclaimed their allegiance with the general strike, and the members spilled to the streets, demanding government intervention in the economy. Further expansion. Uh, worker rights, justice for the martyrs of Berlin Blut Mai, and punishment for the businessmen and their illegal lockouts in the Ruhr. An article of uh, the Mail of Cohen. Conrad Adenauer has reached a Frankfurter Zeitung in the aftermath describing that the economic life in the city as well as much of the region has effectively stopped thanks to the strike. I denounced the strikers in the article, demanding them to stand down as their ranks are infiltrated and hijacked by socialist agents. How will we fix the economy now? Oh god. So now what do we have? We have the Zentrum left, which is great. They were 185, they were 135. They got quite a few of them. I want to protect the center. And I guess minority block would be pretty good. LVP right. LVP right. We'll see what happens. Good God. Germany's not doing so well, are we? I guess we could be red. But better dead than red, you know? Even though we're going about social democratic. Brought us in Ukraine. Just as their own domestic problems continue to rise, so do they for most of our important ally in the East. Hetman, Pablo, Skoropatsky. We packed in early 1918 as our key ally in Ukraine, has been facing increasingly bitter criticism from the exiled Republican opposition. We've been demanding political and economic reforms, worryingly. The situation seems to be spiraling out of Hetman's control. It's true that we have little to spare for our Ukrainian ally, but some said that this is a matter of national security. Should we fail, should we fail to provide some form of assistance, the Hetman's rule may not be much for much longer. Be sure he gets everything he needs. Support the Hetman out. Maybe costing Deborah for now, but by guaranteeing Skoropatsky, Skoropatsky remains power, we may reap the benefits in the long term. You may have the political power. Tons of reading. I apologize for reading so fast sometimes, you know, too. Social Democratic Union support the war strike. In spite of the traditional hesitation towards using, using action, union action, for political gains, the German General Trade Union Federation, one of the largest trade union organizations in the Empire and affiliate of the SPD, was closely monitored by the press and public ever since the beginning of the Ruhr strikes. As the SPD was seen as the opponent of the striker, the trade unions of joint forces with the social strikers may be exactly what they need to take down the despised Reichskanzler. The Federation's outlet, the Arbeit, 
And to the question, trade unions within the Federation were called a joint strike, though with reservations, their fight should be for the rights of workers and for practical reforms to the relations between capital and labor. And not foolish attempts at revolutionary overthrow. Hundreds of thousands of workers across Germany have just thus joined the world strike for the paralyzing industry. So much for the patriotic left. Hey, Haitian President uh, Demosthenes Kalexa asked for support. With the Haitian civil war raging between the incumbent president uh, and his challenger, Ali S. Leskov, Demosthenes Kalexa has asked for support in exchange. The promise that Germany will gain a friendly port in the Caribbean and be able to expand their influence in the Americas. Okay. Infrastructure development. Secure military open trade uh, links. Relief would be nice. Uh, land improvement. I do want to do this one, though. That's important to do, no matter what. Black money turn completed. Escalate rural comp suppression. Though the thousands of workers fooled by social subversives may have legitimate grievances, the struggle for rights must take place in the legislative arena, not in the form of violent street clashes. We must mobilize our forces and suppress a Rhenish government strike or. Uh, Rhenish government, Rhenish general strike swiftly. Once we reduce the intensity of the rural uprising to zero points, we can bring it to a close. Well, what if we don't want to bring it to a close? You cannot control it. You can support it by getting extraordinary powers to deal with insurgency. It's kept active, not growing a ton. I don't know. Should we completely crush it? We should not crush it. It's only 35, so it's not bad, honestly. I mean, it's crippling us right now, but whatever. So what do you got? Inflation. Capital control will be more effective. Capital control. Four thousand to stability. Holy crap. 1500. I have to do that one at either one of these two. There you go. <coughs> Apologize. Strike of the Luxembourg Mining and Metal Workers Union. The winds of the general rural strike have reached a small yet industrialized Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, one of the most recent additions to the German Empire. Higher. Nicholas Biva, the chairman of the Luxembourg Mining and Metal Workers Union, one of the largest trade union confederations in the Grand Duchy, has pledged himself to the strike, pushing thousands of workers across Luxembourg to do so as well. The famous Luxembourg steel industry is frozen almost entirely in the aftermath, and conglomerates such as AR Bed now desperately seek workers to fill critical positions in the plants. The news is not taken well in the chamber of deputies of the small duchy, where the New Luxembourg right party of the right, and affiliated as interim, has announced the strike as an act of treason against the Grand Duchy itself. Prime Minister Joseph Beck has warned that syndicalist infiltration from France will be met with harsh countermeasures. How long could this last? God dang it. Blood in the Rhine. The general strike underway, and the Rhineland is coming for his victims. The police in Essen have reported two bodies have been found in the Rhine at the night, both riddled with several bullet holes. Both of them were identified as activists and organizers in the Metal Workers Union, and a quick investigation by the law enforcement has deducted a trail to the far right activists in the Rhineland, or veterans and extreme youth uh, associated with the Volkish far right nationalists. Seven Kovist and several national socialist movements have occasionally propped up the news in the news ever since the Valkyrie, participating in street clashes and political campaigns in favor of the fringe far right parties. The worrying. They were generally overlooked by post war governments as a non threat. It appears several of them in Essen, seeking to take matters through their own hands to prevent a Judeo uh, syndicalist takeover of the Reich, assassinated their socialist opponents in the night. The news of the deaths has sparked fur among the workers, and numerous members of the Reich side demand the government to show solidarity with the victims' families. Those opinions is weak on the strike, however. Intensity is reduced. We shouldn't have been cynicalist. Well, in all honesty, if we do this anyways, we're going to lose 10% political power anyway, so it doesn't even matter. Let's see an envoy. Lithuanian. An envoy has arrived from Lithuania, wishing to invite representatives from our government to negotiate a new trade deal, currently due to the Treaty of Brest Litovsk and our subsequent agreements. We have restricted Lithuanian trade from the Baltic Sea. We could either go through the Mimel or Riga. It appears now that they wish to have unrestricted access to the Baltic Sea, circumventing Mimel and Riga. Very well. Oh, we'll go there right now. Why not? Oh, that's not good. Dublin elections? Well, okay. How can I support you? Alright, so... We got, hey, we got more seats. We got the minority block. Fantastic. 
center would be fantastic, as well as the right. 216 seats. So we only need one more. The end of China debate. The recent outbreak of the end of China revolt. As of the heated discussions in the Reichstag on the other side of the globe after a project for direct military intervention in the colony was put on the floor. Most parties agree that abandonment of the colony is entirely out of the question. A stale aftertaste remains as one of the most painful questions that's been raised in the debate. Why did Germany expect to expand into the Far East in 1919 in the first place? For the first time in years, it seems as Parliament has come to an agreement for once, namely the acquisition of the French colonies outside of Africa has barely any had, a, had no benefits for Germany. Representatives of the SPD argue that colonialism should serve the purpose of civilization, which already is hardly the case in Africa, but almost certainly not in Asia, where corrupt colonial authorities continue the exploitative legacy of the French and British. The delegates of the Weltschaftspartei complain that the plan, despite the fact that despite Indochina being initially intended as a replacement for far-reaching preparation payments, all it's done in recent years is to burn money in mass, therefore contributing to the economic dilemma Germany has found herself in. Even the DVLP reluctantly admits that the acquisition of Indochina has made Germany vulnerable. I exposed her on their eastern flank to the expansionist Japanese, which worsened in the so-called Einkreisung and circumvented Germany on the global stage, just like in the decades prior to the war. In the end, Germany is not that different from the French and British empires before the Valkyrie, and repeats the same mistakes as its predecessors, to the chagrin of the parliamentarians, however, never-ending discussions remain only that, discussions. It would be the task of a brave shoot strip on East Asia, to put an end to the rebellion as quick as possible, and a plan to reinforce the forces and colonies was ultimately adopted by the Reichstag. We become what we once wore, swore to destroy. Oh. There we go. Good. Magnus von Levetzau criticizes the government passively. We have a form. Oh, God. <coughs> oh, we can do this with a lot of people here, huh? Oh, we can remove debt if we have political power. Oh, crap. The government. Uh, the decision to reimburse the families of the victims of violence in the rural was open, allowed resistance in the Reichstag chambers. The conservatives and nationals whipped up in a frenzy, declared that this is no more than a cowtail against the national traitors. The most aggressive voice in the opposition is Magnus von Levetzau. A notable member of the Fabulous Party, one of the heroes of the Battle of Jutland, and a close ally of Alfred von Tirpitz, he is infamous across the political spectrum for his hardline stances against syndicalism and far-left views. On the parliamentary floor, Levitt Zhao uh, appealed to his and many members of the government's common military background and declared that for us soldiers, it's important to stand a united front in association with the security police, the residents, armed forces, and the technical emergency aid, and to fight the battle announced by the Communists with all sacrifice for the good of the Fabulous. He's not the only one. No, and should the Reichs Council not heed the demands, the far right and the Reichs Tech promise to escalate their resistance against this appeasement. We can show a force to appease the right. Ignore extremists from both sides. Occupy Eastern Rhineland, huh? Enthusiasm among trade unions. A core component of Schleicher's Quervabindung is the abandonment of fixed coalitions and formation of cross-party alliances on the back of trade unions and other non-partisan organizations. Amongst the two leading union movements in the empire, the Christian trade unions, traditionally close to the Zentrum and the DKP, the SPD-aligned free trade unions, the divisions welcomed with open arms for years. Tensions between the unions and their prospective parties have intensified mostly due to the dissatisfaction with the policies of the partisan associates. Zentrum and the DKP have become the epitomes of standstill, while SPD's resolute refusal to assume government responsibility as a junior partner is an aggravated, problematic-minded, left-wing unionist. Schleicher, this vision enables trade unions to have much more direct influence on social policy questions while having to rely on the mediation of useless political parties. Especially in the wake of the current crisis, trade union interests can no longer be ignored by Berlin, and the times of mass unemployment strikes to become even more useless as a means of achieving the political goals than they already were, and thus, Fruitful cooperation across societies is a must. Party affiliations and other divisions are finally receding into the background, and the will of the people is replacing the will of the political classes. What partisan politicians have been unable to achieve for years must now be transferred by the means of the principle of self-help, the most democratic principle of all, to powerful organizations at the base that know how to fulfill the will of the masses in a social and national sense. As a first concession to the unions, the well-known Christian trade unionist Adam Stegerwald, a hierarchy member of the Zentrum Party, is to be appointed to the Labour Secretariat. His reputation and charisma should have a mitigating effect in the face of a worsening unrest in the streets, a toast to the most fruitful possible cooperation. A visit to the Ruhr. The staff of the Reichskanzler has proposed a draft for Schleicher, an official visit to the Ruhr, to alleviate some of the tensions personally. As a of several speeches to trade union representatives in the region, and a final public one in Essen, where the Reichskanzler has promised labor law reform and state protection for strikers who peacefully return to work. This will strengthen Schleicher's reputation as a general and pave the way towards a peaceful resolution of the general strike. This, of course, this proposal comes with its own risks. There's no telling what impression the Reichskanzler will make towards the agitated, frustrated proletarian public, 
Whether they will be impressed by his promises or only be more bold to resist. Finally, while the risk is low, the presence of armed radicals among the rural strikers means there's a possibility some may take matters into their own hands. It's too risky. Meet the Reich's Chancellor. Meeting the Reich's Chancellor may convince them to return to work. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, Franz von Papen aligns with the SWR. A conservative coalition continues a scheme. They're taking advantage of the political crisis in the Prussian legislature. He opened talks with Franz von Papen, the leader of the Zentrum delegation and the Prussian House of Representatives, and a noted leader of the party's right wing. A reactionary nobleman and a veteran of the Valkyrie, Franz von Papen already fit in ideologically with the Schwarz Weiss Rot. In aiming to dissuade any remaining fears about working with a Protestant dominated DVLP, Ulrich von Hassel made use of his contacts in the Reformed Catholic wing of the party. The negotiations between Papen and Martin Spahn were successful. And Papen pledged loyalty not just himself, but also his allies in Bavaria and other southern Catholic states. It's a considerable victory for the uh, Schwarz Weiss uh, Roth coalition, who have already s scored several high profile endorsements and actively pushed for a chance to launch a conservative, conservative revolution. That dude. Whatever. We'll be fine. Hey, we have the minority block too, so. It's fine. Rekomf. 35. Set and dog. Uh, if you want about Sedum Talk, please go ahead. Heil dem Kaiserreich. Hey, you know, I haven't heard this one yet. Well, I've heard it before, but... After the Franco-Prussian War of 1780-1781, the Sedum Talk was a savage celebrated of victory at Saddam, who captured the last French Emperor Napoleon III and the cream of their army. Urging a holiday to honor the Prussian military, the Sedum Talk transformed into a celebration of the Reich's foundation and after the Valkyrie, the humbling of its foes. Then every town and village from Aachen to Mamel, every tree is decorated in black, white, and red. Every bell proudly proclaims his day of celebration. Noble soldiers and innumerable veterans parade proudly through the streets, cheered by the happy masses, and indeed. It's a good day, a day that reminds us of the peace and prosperity we have enjoyed since the forging of the Reich. Hallo dem Kaiserreichs. Black Monday turn completed. Alright, what we got next? Oh god. Labor crisis. <coughs> Work creation will be more uh, beneficial. That's not too bad, look at that. Holy crap. Nice. Do we have anything for a thousand? I need two more cards at least. Crap. Hmm. Not ideal. Stability is fine. Uprising in Ukraine. Crap. While well, the black money economic crisis is rippling through the world, disorder has been arriving in the Oststaten. The situation is particularly harsh on the Ukrainian state, with well, the country's agrarian economy buckling under its own weight. While well, the country already a tinderbox, has now erupted into a civil war with their one-time ally, Simeon Pelletura, and his Republican coalition leading an insurgency in the West. The Ukrainian ambassador in Berlin has assured us that the situation is under control. It does not compromise the position of the Ostval or the Ukrainian political situation. Regardless, there's a little we can do to actually intervene. This seems very serious. We can promote the plan. Rear visit met by protest. Oh, come on. Bruh. The next council's visit in the rural has not left a good impression upon the population. As Schlack and his cabinet know, the situation in the rural has grown increasingly radicalized, and each speed made in the Rhineish cities was met with protests and demands to resign. Due to growing security concerns, the visit had to be cut short, meaning the trade union leaders had to be canceled, and the Reich Council swiftly returned to Berlin. Events were not received well across the empire. Business leaders and members of the Reichstag took this as a sign of weakness and lack of support from the Schlecke government, an impression that needs to be handled somehow. Follow the Batoki government. The fall, the government of Adolf Tertovich von Batoki, Friba, and in Prussia was short lived. The VVLP and the LVB were both, both slowly, fully severed or severed their membership in the House of Representatives coalition. The liberals could no longer find an accord with the nationals and the conservatives, while the DVLP demanded to earn additional ministries to account for the size in the legislature. Were rebuffed. So, briefly, Bataki considered negotiations with a significant social democratic faction in the assembly, but these talks were broke down as well as the SPD demanded no less than subjugation. Advised by circles in the House of the Lords of Prussia, Velen II announced the dissolution of the Prussian House of Representatives. The King of Prussia short note on the decision. Several of the current militias, Schloss and Berlin, see that this as a composition of the current House cannot come to an agreement and back a lasting government. The King has found it fitting to return their mandate back to the people and await a new legislature. Snap elections will be held in a month, and though the plural election system of Prussia means that all sides accept only minor adjustments, a Prussian electoral campaign has begun. It's also bringing much of the same. Oh my god. 96 Prussian snap elections. Snap elections in Prussia have finally arrived and have witnessed 
Uh, considerable gains for the Schwarz Weiss of Rot, a coalition thanks to active campaigning and mobilization by the agrarian movement of East Albion. Though they did not earn a majority, they got to allies in Zentrum, and the minor liberal parts such as Vesjavspatai and the National Liberals, and most importantly, have swayed the Kaiser to their side. Wilhelm II, as King of Prussia, chose to appoint the uh, coalition's preferred candidate, Ewald von Kleist Schmenzim, as Minister President of Prussia. In his first speech before the Prussian House of Representatives, Minister President Kleist announced two axes of his cabinet's political program, reforming the Prussian countryside, which will relieve the struggling agricultural sector and lay the path towards economic recovery, and second, asserting Prussia's position in the empire. Observers, including the Reichskanzler, are assured that this will not mount to open resistance to Schlecker's government, support for right-wingers in the Reichstag, and dangerous federal Prussian, uh, federal Prussian dualism in the empire. Perhaps something should have been done to prevent this. This is terrible. Crap. This is all not good. We need another thing here, too. Half of all currently accrued investments dealt as stability core. Well, we need not stability. We need investments. That's good for investments here. A strategic strike uh, tax hikes. Slash welfare funding. Reduces debt instead of increasing it. That's actually really good. The German welfare system is relatively well funded, but in times of distress, we cannot dedicate as much funding to the system as we normally could. The situation is bound to be unpopular with the general population, however. Copy of the Papier Mach. Inflation will be added to the deck. An effective and somewhat artificial and controversial method of increasing government revenue is simply printing more money. Well, this will cause inflation. It also provides for the currency for economic recovery, of course, as long as the trust in the German Mach remains. The inflation is getting pretty high, not gonna lie. Can I send you anything at all? Failed coup. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, we're gonna escalate that and. I mean, that's just really strong. So, is Shock here? Schleicher? Can I get rid of this guy? Holy crap. He's really bad. This relief is actually pretty good. Construct the propaganda machine. Schleicher block for action is now enabled. So how is the faction going? We could risk it. Really risk it. And get a thousand. There we go. Okay, that's better. That's not good. <laughs> oh, look what we got. Minority block. Still, still the same. Still the same. I need the center, though. The center and the right wing. We'll go with that. We'll protect those groups. Ah. Uh, curtail uh, distribution. Activate the unions. Arrest labor activists. Using charges more or less based on reality. We can weed out the ranks of the strike organizers and break down the organization of the general strike, leaving them easy pickings for us. Selective reforms. <coughs> we can weaken the morale of the strikers by convincing some of the businesses affected by the strikes to propose and implement minor reforms. As we've learned in the past, well, a 20% jump in wage and slightly less hazardous work conditions are paltry cost compared to the revolution down the line. That's pretty good. Accidental lapse, uh, security lapses. Uh, by saying, let's say accidentally withdrawing police force from certain uh, areas in rural cities, we can bring down dangerous socialist radicals out of the woodwork, which will leave them vulnerable to be registered and captured down the line. We'll raise it by 15. Interesting. I like that. Raise it and do this one too. So uh, it's neutralized. You lose consumer goods. We get 25% more political power. I like both those. Because we need that PP. Sympathy strikes in Silesia. After some time during which they assess the situation and witness the establishment of a right-wing government in Prussia, Polish workers in the industrial upper Silesia region have joined the ongoing strike. The motion to pledge themselves to the goals of the rural workers was taken as a collaboration between the two main Polish labor unions in the German Empire, the Polish Professional Association, of a Christian and national character, which generally focuses on the Poles in the Ruhr, and the Central Trade Union of Poland. That is closer with the Socialists and SPD. Dozens of thousands of workers in the coal mines and steel mills of Upper Silesia have emptied their workplaces and their peers into the Ruhr have joined their German comrades. 
The decision by the Polish trade unions have inflamed the generally tepid relations between the Germans and the Poles in the ethnically upper, mixed upper Silesian region. The German workers have generally refused to associate with the strike, and this movement has made them even less likely to join forces. This has been criticized by the chairman of the ZCP, Josef Reimer, and the pro, uh, press organs of the union describe this as the use of ethnic tensions as a tool of the developing Prussian dictatorship to divide the workers and the str struggle for rights. They all perish like rats, and like the rest. This one's making me sweat a little bit right now. But we're looking decent here. Move five from the death score. Black money turn completed. Good. Alright, so. Oh my god. Oh my god. So what do we have? Liquidity crisis. Money creation would be more important. Oh god. We're going to really spike the debt now. So this was more than fine. Stagnation investments. So now it becomes a labor crisis. God dang it. Well, Luxembourg Party of the Right merges or proposes Malcolm for Gazettes. The strikes in Luxembourg, which have already been very vulnerable to syndicalist agitation and mobilization, have made rounds to the small state's chamber of deputies. Located near France, on the frontier before the syndicalist bloc, and highly industrialized, with powerful unions and local socialist organizations. He's been highly anxious of a possible social revolt since 1920. Prime Minister Joseph Beck, representing the Luxembourger Party of the Right, has proposed a law to curtail the growth of socialism in Luxembourg, the law for the defense of the social and political order. Opponents of the law, however, have taken it to call the Muzzle Law, or Malkoyev Gazette. It will give the government the power to dissolve any other organization believed to be threatening the Constitution. As a result, it has been highly criticized by the Socialists and Luxembourg SPD, who claim that Beck intends to use this law to ban all opposition to his government and orchestrate the creation of an authoritarian regime, with the Rokamp as a mere excuse. The ruined growth of authoritarian elements within the party of the right, influenced by the authoritarian anti-socialist turn in the rest of the Germany, certainly gives these claims credence. I don't care what happens, we need political power, so we're going to do that. Inflation weapon, weaponry for inflation. This make me feel better, at least. We need more investments, too. Like, bruh. Copy the card, our by Dean's public work will be added to the deck. I think that's one we would probably want. Tarnell and Bod envision the expenditure of upward of a 2 million marks on the public works program alone until the company recovers, and we can deploy them again, and millions of unemployed will must receive temporary relief in the form of public works, which we read before. And hopefully these guys win here too, but hey, I think we'll end it there for today. We're struggling still, but welcome, welcome to Germany. We didn't even make it to 1938 or 1937 yet, either. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I will keep on going and see if we can make sure we don't completely collapse the German economy. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.